All right, guys, we're back. Episode 11 of Put Up or Shut Up. My name is Stunna. I'm the host around here. I wouldn't say I necessarily have the most or anything like that, but I'm here nonetheless. Uh, let's go ahead and introduce you to our guests who have been waiting ever so patiently to get this bad boy underway. We've got Thorin, we've got Steel, and we've got Moses. Uh, how are you guys doing this fine, fine Monday afternoon? Afternoon, yeah. Evening, afternoon, debatable. I'm doing, I'm doing great. I just I'm, popped off a 12-hour trip, 12-hour travel time, so I'm, I'm ready to go. Well... I think we're going to do just that. First question I've got coming up for you guys. Name one player that was not involved in any shuffle that should have been. And we're going to start with Steel. I put Nath because, okay. okay. Put the puppy down. <laughs> put the bunny back in, back the, in the box. <laughs> I put Nath. And the reason I put Nath is because... I think he's like one of the strongest tier one NA players. <laughs> I did it because I don't want to hear myself right now. Nap's one of the strongest tier one NA players, and he can roll with like any of the top teams. But for some reason, he was left off. I don't know specifically why. Um, I don't know if people like just don't like him, but it's not like he was like kicked from teams or anything. It's just that all his teammates just ended up leaving one by one by one. You know, it started with Stanislaw, and if Stanislaw <coughs> hadn't left, Optic would have been probably the best uh, North American team for a, a long time. And then he left, and then Tarek and Rush just left most recently. And it's just like, I don't even think he had time to really prepare to get on another team. He didn't really, it's not like his, it was his fault and no one wanted him. It's that everything happened at last moment, and then he's just like, oh, I, I guess I'm still here, and all my teammates left. Uh, moving on, Thorin, let's get your side. Guy okay, took Electronic from flip side. Fantastic player, even when Flipside did badly at the Major, helped him qualify for the Major. Much better player than the team he's on. And so I think in a world where Gambit, Hellraisers, Na'Vi all changed players, I think he probably should have been on a better team at the end of this shuffle. Okay. And Moses, what you got? I went with Existence, uh, the legendary <laughs> French in-game leader who's been on the team who's missed out on a couple of the shuffles for some time now. Uh, I think the major showed us that those heavy tactical in-game leader focused styles of play can be very effective still. And on top of that, the French teams are sh are really struggling right now, and they don't look like they can really be that effective. So this is a perfect time for them to come back in. Okay, well, we got four and a half minutes on the clock. Let's just take it away, guys. Go ahead. All right, well, I'll start then. First off, Electronic, I think, you know, showed some skills, but I don't think he's quite ready yet. I mean, we've only really seen him at the one major qualifier having a having a tense uh, performance, but, you know, we, we need to see more of him against the top-tier competition. And I think that's that's kind of the big thing that you have to do. He's been under Blade, he's been under this tight system, and he still needs a little bit more time to show that he's ready to get out and be a little bit more of a looser style. In regards to NAF, uh, I don't think he's anything special. I think he thrives in a team that had a lot of aggression around it. I don't think he is some kind of a game-changing player. If you can see the shuffles that are on at NA, it's been long coming. Is there shuffles that have kind of created these super teams in North America? And I think it's pretty fair that he was left off on this like top tier of Cloud9. And at the moment, it just seems like there's Cloud9 and there's Liquid, and there's a massive drop off. So in that sense, he could have maybe gone somewhere to to one of those lesser teams. But I don't think it's worth talking about in the context of the shuffle overall. I, I'll agree with you about Electronic, and I, I'd say that he needs a little bit more time to kind of prove himself. But you were putting Existence on here, and Existence was on the best North American, sorry, European Counter-Strike source team coming into CSGO. And the entire time, we, the entire way through, he could not put up results at all. Starting with NIP just crushing that entire era, and then he was left out of all the French teams because he just wasn't able to cut it. And if you're talking about tactical teams, like Zeus, yes, he won the major with Gambit, but it's like it's a completely different style than Existence's style. Existence and style is like way super strict and then weird set strats. And I don't think those work in CSGO not nearly the same way that they work in CS Source. So the first of all, Moses said that you know Electronic needs more time to prove himself. Well, conversely. Existence has proved himself. He has failed, what was it, like five majors in a row or something? So anyone who enjoys going to majors probably doesn't want this motherfucker loaded into their side of the server. Likewise, the reason why he also shouldn't be involved in a shuffle is because he refuses to speak English. 
So as a result, he can only go to French team. There's only one French team in theory that can make him ages at the moment, which is G2. They don't want him. They've all played with him before. QED, no way he could be involved in a shuffle. No, I mean, listen, existence. Obviously, this these French players have lived in this fantasy land where they can make this work as shocks as the in-game leader or Smiths as an in-game leader. This is where you need existence at this point in time. Yes, he's struggled and he hasn't gotten out of the groups at a major yet, but shocks hasn't gotten out of the groups at a major since Natu was playing back in 2015. Like this is something that you need. And at this point, with the amount of talent and the amount of experience those players have on G2 currently, um, with the loose play style they have and the amount of experience that existence has gotten with less skilled players and having to kind of change his style a little bit to help out, I think coming back right now would be a very worthwhile, uh, I guess, experiment you'd call it to make, would, would be to bring him back in and get a little bit more of the tactics in because this team is starting to look lost. They just lost to Envious in the New York qualifier. They're looking very, very raggedy. Um, Electronic, I just think, I feel like Electronic, most of the excitement around him is like the hype that was built up throughout this whole year of like everyone's knowing that we had to see what he was capable of, that he was this big potential player. And when we finally did see it, it blows it a little bit out of proportion. So I, I still think I still want to see one to two more events out of him before I would say he's worth making the buyout, whatever it might be, bring him onto your team. I think that's the bigger speaking, gamble if you end up having to pay $100,000. Speaking of buyouts though. Yeah, you know, that's a very key element of shuffles nowadays, you know. And so it doesn't matter whether or not NAF should be involved in some sort of a shuffle because that means that there has to be a team that wants him to get him from his current team. And all the teams he deserves to be on can't afford his buyout because he is pure trash. <laughs> uh-huh. No, no defense? No defense for the trash can? No. Well, I'm just... Well, he took me aback with the last line of that because he was saying the yeah, buyout was the thing that was keeping him. No, the buyout was keeping him back, but the buyouts kept plenty of people out of, of top teams. And I don't think the buyout is a valid argument because of how buyouts have stopped plenty of really deserving players of making shuffles on other teams, such as Mouse like Electronic or, or from Penta. <laughs> <laughs> time. Uh, that is the time, actually. So close yeah. down to the wire. You had that that last little life left in your fight there, Josh. But it's... Uh, I liked it. You know, it's good. You tried. There's other questions. We'll move forward. It's not a big deal. I'm going to have to give the point over to uh, to Moses, though. I think he makes the, the best argument for the case there. Okay. Just You hate to see Speaking it. Speaking of straight fire. No bias here at all. There was nothing 0%. straight about that, mate. It was nothing straight about that. It was crooked. It was in all right, no way. Hold on. Uh, you, you've got a chance. It's okay. What time is death? Or excuse me. What team is destined to fail after their most recent roster change? We're going to start with you, Duncan. Okay. Right. I actually will pick Gambit. So I picked the major winners because what was the big storyline of the major win? It was that Zeus is the in-game leader. He even did the special timeouts. He was one of the best players in the team in terms of impact. And obviously, even with him, they didn't always do so well. And so I think without him, they, it's a pretty gutted team. I, I can't see them doing a whole lot. All right. Let's go, Moses. Surprise, surprise. I picked this new Optic lineup that they brought in of, uh, of all the European players of you know Freiburg, Magis, Galu. Um, I think this, this team is going to be a lot of struggles in terms of their role. I think there's a lot of players trying things that they haven't done in a long time. And I think the question marks in terms of a lot of these players, or a couple of these players, underperforming leading into this roster. So I think they're poised to have a really bad time. And Mr. Nassan. The question is, what team is destined to fail? So I put Rogue. Rogue, of all these teams that we're talking about, is not even going to win like 5% of their games. These other teams like Gambit or uh, Optic, they're going to still be able to pick up games here and there. And these are teams, OK. Optic is a team that's just like, oh, we're just going to put these scraps together and make a roster because we have this roster spot. But Rogue, they're not even going to get like wins against like the bottom tier EPL teams. <laughs> all right. All right. You've sold enough. Let's go ahead and open the floodgates for four and a half minutes. Uh, take it away, guys. Here's the thing. As the I, career I think... of Moses should show all of us, failure and success are relative terms. If you're a four foot five, 110 pound soaking wet bald man from Michigan, that's not Michigan, but may as well be. It'll be better for him. 
some bumfuck coal mining town outside of Michigan that takes a train to get to Michigan, then even to appear on a show like this and be defeated like me would actually be success. It would seem like you failed because you didn't win the show, <laughs> but that would be success. So for someone like Rogue to even be in EPL, that is success right there. He, Hiko's still allowed to play professional Counter-Strike, not just on his own stream. That is success. They can't fail. Some of those players, one of them's 16 years old. He hasn't even had sex yet. He's going to get to shoot people in EPL and official matches. <laughs> Anything could happen. That's success. They are destined to succeed, no matter what, my friend. I'm, and I'm glad you bring up... Jason, Okay, okay. Come on, you take the button. You I'm glad the you bring up the fact that it's relative, Duncan, because on one hand, Gambit... Did you have sex with I mean, relatives? I don't know where this is going. <laughs> obviously, Gambit is not going to reach the major grand finals uh, again anytime soon, but I think this roster yeah. is still going to be a, a top 10 team. I think they can still contend with the other top 10 teams. I think they'll still have some good upsets yeah, here and there yeah, and yeah, good performances. This team is going to be top but, 10 in the world? Yeah, I think so. I think they'll still be up there. Okay. Oh, you heard him, guys. Don't worry about it, Duncan. On the other hand, Rogue, <laughs> it's hard to say Rogue is going to be the team to fail because no one expects them to do anything. That team is just like – I even had to look up the roster as soon as you said you said Rogue. I, I just – whatever the HL team found it. They're not expected to do anything. So in that sense, all you can really do is succeed because they're starting from the very bottom. This Optic lineup is players who have had some pedigree, who have had success as individual players. And when you put these pieces together, they're not going to reach that, that height of success that they've all had individual level in the past and in that sense with all the excitement around them i think they're definitely going to fail like this is the thing you guys are already saying like these this team is destined to fail and therefore i can't win this point of this team is destined to fail still i just have one question for you one question alone that i won't address your point anymore okay don't you think that just to be allowed to play an epl is success for someone who wants to be a professional counter strike player no <laughs> Eloquent. Eloquent in his memory. <laughs> What's the delay while he was thinking about it? <laughs> play. We'll play. Okay. What now? <laughs> so, okay. In terms of so Moses, I, pickable, you guys, you guys just, about, okay. you guys just agree though that Rogue, you, you have no expectations for them at all. And just being in the EPL is like this big thing like no one expected them to be there so you expect them to fail i think that roster forming the question is, is what team is destined you the question is what team is destined to fail after the most recent roster change you agree with me you're no. just bringing like relativity in <laughs> when people no, I get to the final of the nba but they lose every time people call that failure well, it's on failing on the biggest scale possible. So when Gambit never, ever makes a top finish at a major ever again, maybe he doesn't even qualify for future majors beyond the one that they're going to be in, that'll be pretty big failure. Again, relative term. I still think Gambit is going to be a top 10 team. They're going to be top, in a, top eight at a couple of events at the end of this year. Uh, they've still got the talent. They've still got Hobbit, who's an emerging star. They've still got a Dren, who's been playing so very well. Um, Mo all he needs is one of those games. I mean, they have the players that it's needed to be top 10. It's not like the top 10 is really all that locked up and solidified. So I don't see Gambit failing, per se. I think they're, they're going to be right where they were you know, right before the major is, you know, some top eights getting into the quarterfinals, getting to, you know, the occasional maybe run to the semifinals, but this is a team that won't fail. I agree, Jason. So Gambit Thanks, lost Josh. their game, who was a <laughs> pivotal point, a pivotal part of why Gambit had so much success. Losing Zeus means that this team shouldn't do well. But I think that they'll still be a top 10 team, which is success in itself, isn't it, Duncan? Yeah, I think ultimately that if you ever do anything in life, you're successful. So wow. I think we all lose the <laughs> Holy shit. That was some of the worst I have ever heard. Ever. They all bought into my argument, though. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a weird one because I feel like you guys set Steel up for success no matter what on that one. So... <laughs> Oddly enough, I'm going to give him the point anyway. Let's give the point over to Steel. Let's move along to the next question. It is the 22nd. Yeah, so. it, it is. So I mean, we had an eclipse today, right? So weird <laughs> shit's happening. I don't know. Uh, if not it's Rush or Tarek, break. who should C9 have picked up? And we're going to throw it over to Moses first. Okay. I'm going to say they should have picked up Valdi. 
he spent a lot of time with a lot of attention and a lot of eyes on him. Plenty of time during during you know the point where we all realized Shroud wasn't exactly cutting it for a long, long time. That they could have reached out to Valdi, um, and then there's plenty of time when he dropped off uh, when he dropped off the roster of Heroic and was kind of sat on the bench waiting for North. That they could have talked to him. They could have opened dialogue. And I think that's a player that over the past six months would have been an amazing thing for them to go get. And definitely, I would have thrown the kitchen sink at him. Uh, you know, once these shuffles started happening. Okay, let's go, Steel. I picked Sean Gares because C9 had a lot of their success under his leadership. And I don't know if you guys have been watching him lately, but his mechanical skills are on point. He's been grinding the DMs. He's been watching demos. He's been creating strats. He's reinvented himself way more than existence ever could have. <laughs> All right, Thorin. I picked Elish, best player in NA. People often say Stewie 2K is the other best player in NA. They have very different styles of play, very different roles. Put the two together. You've got the, the makings of a potentially great world-class team. All right, four and a half minutes on the clock. Let's do this. I don't think Elijah's okay. personality would... <laughs> go on, go on. I don't on, think Elijah's personality would have meshed well with the, the Stewie personality just because... I, I know how Stewie gets, and like he'll get he does these passive aggressive remarks, and I think Liege is reported to do the same. I really haven't experienced it firsthand, and I think that the tension would build between the two players on the team, and I, I think that the team would fall apart from the inside out with that type of mixture. And then with Valdi as well, I actually have sources that Valdi was in talks with North for a really long time, and. If Valdi could choose between North and Cloud9, North is the no-brainer for him. So I don't think he was even an option for Cloud9, and therefore Sean, Nair Sean Gares is the best. Well, I mean, that just exposes one more flaw in Cloud9 that they're not even thinking Valdi's an option, because why the hell wouldn't you at least reach out and test the waters? I think he would have been perfect. Here's the big issue with Sean. All well and good. He had his time in the sun. He was phenomenal in-game leader a while back. But here's his past two teams. He has got to handpick them on both Echo Fox and going into Misfits. That's been entirely under his control. And what have those teams accomplished since since he's been in those rosters? I'm not entirely sure um, that he would be able to be an effective in-game leader. I'm not entirely sure he knows how to use pieces properly in the current meta. So, I mean, I if you can handpick two teams and you don't accomplish anything except for online qualifiers, you're going to do it. I just Sean agree with Gares, that point. Sean Gares has appeared in more photos with small bitch-made dogs than winning games in Counter-Strike against good teams over the last two years. So if we're going to go ahead and tell fairy stories to the kids, let's just have Veslin join their team. He used to be a very good in-game leader from Sweden about 15 years ago. Oh, sorry, is that relevant? We're talking about 2017. No, I don't think Sean Gares should appear in Cloud9 in any context other than perhaps as a male stripper at some sort of 50th birthday bash that they might hold for Jack soon enough. I don't know why you would even pick him to be on Cloud9. He doesn't even want to be on the team he's on. <laughs> okay, Here's to address... To address yeah, Jason's point about um, having the pick of the litter, he was picking players like Rix, Shazam. Yeah, he sounds okay. He's still with Shazam. You know? He's still with Shazam. <laughs> like, like, Why is he doing that? Roka, <laughs> like you're you're going through the list. He's he's going through like he's clenching at straws right now to get players to play with, right? Exactly. That's not what about Sean. those decisions? What about those decisions make you think that he could properly make decisions for a tier one team? He's getting paid, isn't I he? I think that silence has an answer. No, it's <laughs> a lot of people getting paid it's for delay. It's not... <laughs> Here's the thing. Let's paid. move on to the big one. Let's, He's let's a genius. Because <laughs> here, here's the issue with the liege. When you when you bring a liege over. Guy used to be a former StarCraft pro. Guy could have been pro at Overwatch, obviously. I mean, he's learning languages. He was, he's one of those like Ivy League-level students. Very, very smart and intelligent. And you put him on a team with someone like Stewie, who's trying to learn how to be an in-game leader, you can just tell that's someone that, you know, Elise would just have building up inside of him. Yes, he's a very good player, but I think he would get frustrated so quickly saying, I know the better decision. This is the better decision we should have made in the game. And I think over time, that would lead to a situation where they have a little bit of a cold war, and they're very, very critical of each other's decisions in the game. 
Um, and I think that would just come to a head and make that team even worse, despite the fact that Elise is so incredibly skilled. I agree yeah, with we that. We can overcome Cold Wars. Like, for example, now the United States and Russia fight terrorism together and decide American elections. So if we just all work <laughs> together, like Elise and Stu 2K could, we could make Cloud9 great. If you don't agree with that, you support terrorism. You guys agree, though, that Cloud9 <laughs> needs an in-game leader. No, I think and oh, no, I actually from Team Liquid. I'm fine really with Stewie. Stats. I don't think Stewie, for a long-term solution, will be a good in-game leader because you see that he wants to switch off and on. He goes to in-game leader out of necessity, but he shines as a star player that's able to be loose and do whatever he wants. He stepped up to every challenge put in front of him. I'm fine with him continuing to be an in-game leader for the short term to see how it goes. Short term. Mm. Mm. Duncan, do you have any closing remarks on this question? You were you were vividly silent. Oh, it must be nice. Time's over. Yeah, the time is over, uh, but this is my show. It's pretty awesome. I'd probably just say that I think Jason didn't really say a lot about Valde there, considering he was so bold. Weird. No His one attacked it because you all know it's the right decision. His silence <laughs> spoke many volumes. Harry Potter level volumes. <laughs> Harry Potter level volumes. Uh, and also some Harry Potter style wizardry going on with these points because I think this one's clear cut uh, for Thorin to get this point. It's pretty it's pretty obvious. I, I had to give him the last word and then he came through with that last word. It's just it's just how it works out. Without uh, you know, let's without diving into that one too much. Let's take a look at yeah, this definitely. next question. <laughs> Who will win Dreamhack Masters Malmo? Uh, and Steel, let's start with you. I think that these will win Dreamhack Masters Malmo. They have an upgrade in an upper department, in my opinion. And they also brought in Olaf. So they're going to be a little bit different, but they still have the brains of uh, Kerrigan. Okay. Let's go, Thorin. Okay, I'm going to take SK Gaming, number one ranked team in the world. Outside of the major, they've basically won the most tournaments in the last few months. All signs point to them being the favorite too, and then as such, indeed, winning Dream Act Marvel. Mm -hmm. And Moses. I'm going to go with Astralis. Uh, I, I think, you know, they're a team that's poised to do very well at this event just because, you know, they had all that prep going into the major that they, yes, they failed a little bit there, but they still have all that they that they didn't get to use a lot because they have to face a whole lot of the top teams. So still going to have that in the back pocket. If there's any team that I expect to come out of a month-long break and be prepared and ready to play, it's going to be Astralis over any other team. All right. Uh, I think you might be onto something there. Let's go four and a half minutes on the clock. Open it up, boys. Okay, phase. Yes, they have an upgrade in the in the opera department, sure. But I, I mean, they have big, big question marks about the rest of that team at this point. Olaf, how is he going to fit into this team? How are these? How are they all going to play together? Who's going to be the one taking point? Who's going to be the one playing a little bit more passive to support each other? Um, and and still, we also seen the last two events, like Kerrigan had an atrocious major. Uh, Cologne in the major, Alu wasn't really an impact player whatsoever. Nico had a couple bad tournaments. The last two tournaments, all they've had is rain. So the, the idea that all of a sudden they're going to turn up to this after going on vacation is kind of crazy. Same with SK. I think the one thing that we'll see, I think SK will come into this event feeling rusty. I, you know, they're all just getting back. You saw the tweets just yesterday. They were just getting back into LA to the gaming house to start practicing. Um, to do some kind of a boot camp for a week. I think they're going to be a little bit tired. I, I don't think they're going to be quite have their legs underneath them. Um, and I just feel like Astralis, in terms of their preparation, is going to be way, way better than both of them. Astralis okay. had basically a month to prepare for the major, and they couldn't beat Gambit and Dosia, who looks like he should be serving the kebab. I'm going to go and get like two but hours. But they could beat SK. They could doesn't beat matter. SK. doesn't matter. That doesn't win you the tournament beating SK. Oh, sure. You know, I realize to a North American sure. team, that's the dream to even beat them. Now, in terms of yeah. FaZe, FaZe as a team have all these individual talents. They always did. That's part of what gave them some of their firepower. But early on when they made this lineup, they were good. But when they started to win was actually when Kiyoshima really kicked into this like support role where he was like playing a very good anchor in the sights. And you look at the one tournament they did badly at was the tournament where his stats were atrocious. So I actually think him being good and playing that role so well was a key aspect that brought together the stars with more of the support of core. And now they don't have any of that. They have only stars. And no one in their team has played a traditional, more supportive role. They've all been stars of their teams. So I think it, it would be 
there's no real reason to say phase win aside from if someone else had taken sk and astralis <laughs> <laughs> So everyone is familiar with the honeymoon phase phrase <laughs> where teams that are newly formed or acquire two new players, they perform really well in the, sh in, in the short term at the very least. And DH Melmo is short term. So phase is coming in with two new players. And as Jason said, we don't know who's going to take point. We don't know what they're going to really hit us with. Astralis and SK both haven't made any roster changes. Their strats have been pretty much the same for like a really long time. And Kerrigan, as, as will the rest of Phase, will understand SK's and Astralis' strats. So it's going to be easy for Phase to counter strat them, but it's going to be really difficult for SK and Astralis to counter strat Phase because no one knows what to expre expect from Phase right now. See, so you talk about the honeymoon phase, but this is going to be the honey dick phase. Because they've got oh, my, they've got Guardian, but it ain't 2015 anymore. And so they're just going to make you think they're going to do well, and they're going to do nothing. And all they're going to do is have little morons like phase up, and then they're going to lose. That's it. Cod kids that don't know anything about the game. Meanwhile, SK didn't win the major. They're hungry. They want to get back on top. They want to show that the major was a fluke. Astralis did that once, but now they're back in charge. They're winning all the tournaments like they did at DreamHack, like they did at ECS, like they did at ESL1 Cologne going to be back to business as usual, winning. And if you don't think that's the case, then you just don't believe in Fallen as an in-game leader. Right, Moses? Listen, it's not going to be it's not going to be business as usual. <laughs> and you know what the craziest thing about this SK team lately is how good they Fallen is this in game team. They're not this focused hungry team that we've that we've seen them be in the past. They've even talked about it in interviews. On top of that, their biggest accomplishment at the major is the most controversial tweets being put about complaining about the playing conditions, complaining about computers, everything not being right. They've turned into little divas, Duncan, and this is the issue. That that distracts away from being able to prepare and perform properly at events. So this is going to be a little bit of a dicey situation for them. Astralis' star player ass. cried because he lost a match. Yeah, passionate. He's working hard. That's a lot of that work going into that. He's going to cry again in his bed, in the shower, everywhere. I don't honestly <laughs> know what to think. think. That's like, I've ever heard. I don't know what to think about that. That's uh, whatever, dude. <laughs> All right. I didn't so, make him do it. You didn't. That's exactly right. Uh, but I do have to pick one of you to, to get a point, and I do think uh, I don't even have to give you justification. That's just how this thing works. So thorn sells me the car he just does josh you, you really just kind of fell out on that one. i don't know what happened man i forgot you were here if i didn't see you in front of me on the screen i would have forgot you were here honestly if i didn't have Damn, this josh, paper, I'd be able to speak properly <laughs> yep all right touche with that being said let's go into the last question that i have for you guys here uh what tier one team in dreamhack masters malmo will make an early exit and let's start with duncan I'm going to keep the theme consistent. I'm going to say Gambit because I actually think first event with a new in-game leader, one who has no experience on this level. They've obviously got a team which was heavily reliant on their old in-game leader and that defined a lot of the success. I think it's fairly obvious they should be making an early exit. Okay. Let's go, Moses. I picked SK for this one, Keeping of, uh, speaking of keeping things consistent. And here's the reason why. Here's the big reason. The question states which tier one team is going to drop out. There's only two tier one teams in the entire in the entire seat at the moment, and that's SK and Astralis. Everything else after that is just tier two. Even I mean, everyone's had roster changes. Everyone's looking up and down. Those are the only two teams that matter in that top tier. And of all those, it's only going to be Astralis that makes it out. All right, Steel, don't disappoint. I picked G2 because most people in the community and most top tier analysts believe that Tier 1 teams encompass more than just two teams. And most people would agree that G2 is an elite Tier 1 team. I think they're going to go out. Those people are idiots. <laughs> whoa, whoa. Easy on the name, Colin. Let's do four and a half minutes on the clock. Go for it. Here's I don't think those yes, people usually. are idiots. Because <laughs> if those people were idiots, of course not. then the good people who make up this show wouldn't have accepted Gambit or G2 as options. So I trust in them to not be idiots and to be the kind of people who would know where to assign points correctly and therefore say that automatically Jason's answer that it has to be SK for that logic falls apart completely and he has nothing. 
No, not at all. I mean, listen, there is normally there's more than two tier one teams, but this this scene is in shambles after all these roster shuffles, all the teams that we see just being so up and down. G2 looks great at one event. They look shit at the next event. Navi looks okay at one event, looks shit at the next event. Gambit looked like shit heading into the major and has a great run. I mean, you can't put all these teams. This is what separates the tier two from the tier one and it's consistency. It's the fact that you do a tournament in and tournament out. And the only two teams who have done that across the entirety of the year so far are SK and Astralis. The rest of these teams don't even matter. I mean, it's outside of that, G2, they, they could go out early, but they're just not good enough to be a Tier 1 team. They can't compete with these guys on a consistent basis. Hmm. Hmm. And same yeah, with whoever consistency. Duncan said. Yeah. We're talking about consistency, SK Gaming actually managed to make like the playoffs of, what, something like seven – Six, seven tournaments in a row, even having a bad tournament at the major, still top eight. So if you were to make top eight at a tournament like DreamHack Malmo, you couldn't make an early exit because it's not early on that the quarterfinals are played. So I said using your own logic of SK, you know, it would make any sense that they could come last. In the fact, question all is rules likely. of the known universe would have to change. <laughs> G2. And then in terms of G2... <laughs> G2 is an up and down team. That's the thing with them. And because they were down before, now they're going to be up. That's the way it works. The old season. But that's not Counter Strike. And that's they're not a team how it works, where they're facing though. a lot of new that's lineups. Like... They've got a lot of skill. They've got the wake up call because they did badly at the major. You know, they're going to finally come back. They're going to apply themselves. They're going to do well and just not go out early. I've never heard of an up and down team be referred to as. Sorry, I fucked that up. <laughs> They were mainly down, and then you're giving them like an up and down thing. They're mainly down though. They they have really dynamic season sides, but the players are way too loose. There's no structure in the team. They have no one to really just be like, yo, do this. We need to be disciplined. And as a result, they end up throwing away rounds and throwing away leads, despite having really dynamic city sides. And then on their T sides, they just aren't able to take any ground because they have too many star players trying to swing their dick around and try to make the entries and make the openings, but they're not playing together as a team. See, you said they're not up and down. I agree because they don't have massively varying results. Right, That's why they're not up and down. They're fairly consistent. And since they have consistently bad. made the playoffs of the tournaments that they've entered, they can't make an early exit. See, it's not about who'll do badly relative to who they are. It's about who'll go out early. And so with the consistency, you're right. It wouldn't make sense to stay up and down because they don't really go down as much and make early exits. So consistency, I agree. They'll probably not make an early exit. I know you're the historian, Duncan, but for one point during this segment, can you talk about what the question addresses, which is what might happen in the future, not what has happened in the past? It's not about their consistency okay. in the past. Okay. It's about looking forward and say who's likeliest to drop out. And SK, this is an event they got knocked out of in the group stages last year. This is an event where they're coming in after a long, long break that they've had. Um, and it's this is going to be a little bit of a trap game for them. I don't okay. think they're going to be quite prepared for it. But why would what they did a year ago be relevant since we're talking about the future, not the past? I am talking about the hair. future. You won't have hair in five minutes, so I can tell you that for sure. <laughs> Is that where you're going? You're going to go for the low blow. You're going below the belt already. It's not even rapid fire yet. Gambit has a guy called Fitch calling the strats. You know who he is? No. You know what his strats are like? No. You're is going to watch him tournament game only, on, only on day one. You told me. Apparently, you just asked me, so you don't even know. If you don't even know who the in-game leader is, how can you have faith in this team not to make another sure Dren is the in-game leader. That's what they announced when the when the trend is the game leader, yeah. Yeah. So speaking of wow. which, and but, I mean, consistent. listen, Gambit, Gambit still has some incredible star players in this team in terms oh, of. Oh wait a minute! So the in-game leader, leader is a guy who's never been an in-game leader before, and he was the star player. I think they'll probably go out early then, guys. Brand new in-game leader. Thanks for making that point. I think Optic went there. really well with Jason. <laughs> they made top three at <laughs> Summit. Oh man! Summit so is a time... person, not a tournament. Don't be silly. Well, look, the timer, the timer runs out and I, you know, they all filibuster. yeah, there was, there was quite the filibuster, uh, but I, I'm just, I'm thoroughly impressed, Jason. I, I, I got to give it to you, man. Who knows? Uh, I really do. I think you've done great, Josh, and your time with us is not done. You get to endure more of this, which I know, I know you're looking forward to. So check this out. We're going to go into rapid fire. You get to help me pick Josh. That's just okay, the way this cool. works. And you're really going to like this first question. I think. You basically get to be, I've, yeah, you get to be. I've been the Bears the whole way through. All full arguments. By, by, by your own design. 
I can't. I, if these guys <laughs> want to beat up on you verbally, I can't stop them. It's you signed up for it. It is what it is. All right, all right. So this first question, though, you're really gonna like this one, Josh. Uh, right. If the trio of Days, Swag, and AZK stick together, who should their two teammates be? I'm gonna say Nifty and JKS. <laughs> Duncan? Okay, then. Going hard in the past. <laughs> I'll just say, okay, they never said you have to say a specific name. I'll say Rising Talents. Wow, that is not an acceptable Jesus answer. Christ you give me two players right now, Duncan Shields. Give me two players. Trash can uh, you are. Trash can. Steel and Skadoodle. Oh, I love it. I love it. Okay. Fucking hell. <laughs> So, you made me do it. <laughs> let's, uh, let's go ahead and, and present your side there, Moses. You get first dibs. Nifty and JKS. Right. This should be good. Yeah, I just I want, I want JKS to be saved. I think this guy's got too much potential. And I think he, he's real to be utilized properly in Renegades for some time now. Um, I think if he gets onto a proper team, um, that would be incredible. Nifty, I think, is a, is a rising talent, Duncan, um, who's very, very good. They need a primary offer because they don't have one. He's currently doing that for Renegades, and he's showed proficiency at it. He showed he can be competitive. And he's also a player that is uh, – he's also been in-game leading for Renegades recently. And I think being an in-game leader, then playing for some period of time would be very beneficial learning how to do it in the future. And he's incredibly good. So I think his argument was great, what I heard of it. I know there was a little bit of lag there, just the way that worked, I suppose. But yeah, it's, it it's hotel. <laughs> it's, hotel. It sounded convincing. I was kind of convinced. Duncan, what do you got? Okay. So first of all, this lineup actually placed top two at a face-it tournament, one of the, the big leagues in the world. They managed to beat one of the all-time great teams, LDLC, who later went on to win the next major. So they've got history. The chemistry was there. More importantly, Steel still plays actively on stream. He's still someone who thinks about the game and he can only play in EPL. So you may as well put all the players together who can only play in EPL. It makes logical sense. Finally, Skadoodle should have been banned because he was involved in a throw and definitely didn't AWP, even though he is a primary AWPer. Therefore, he committed the same ethical sin, whether he benefited from the crime or not. And so he should be actively removed by Valve from pro play and be forced to play on this team as a sort of, you know, like that hell that Prometheus had where he was strapped to that rock and they would just eat his liver every day, those eagles. So that's what Skadoodle's fate should be like. Wow. I don't, I don't know if it's a little extreme. I don't know. That's for the courts to decide. What do you think, Josh? I think I have to go with Jason on this. Wait a minute. You and don't open the I, floor so we can argue against each other? That's what that was, was it not? Do you want to go after it? Fuck it. We'll do it. Okay, Give let us 30 me make seconds. one point about... No, no, no. Okay. No more points for you. No more points for you. Give me 30 seconds on the clock, and we'll just we'll just do it. We'll just do it all style. Okay. okay. Go. Moses. Wait, I, I'm lagging. I can't hear a thing. You, you picked JKS. He is from Australia. His team chooses not to attend big tier one tournaments so they can play in shitty Asian minors because that's something they have a chance of winning. He's not giving up minors. He's not sacrificing anything. He's not sacrificing. Uh -oh. Your Honor, this is ridiculous. We can't be expected to listen to this. It's like Dr. Evil through a potato. <laughs> yes, you are lagging pretty well. Uh, Jason, give me one more try on that one for uh, for your answer there. You're lagging pretty hard. Not exactly. The reason why JKS would be good he's one of the few players that's not gay because we anything as it is. Oh boy. So his words be speak for themselves. Yeah, I mean, I think technical default there I kinda have to give it to <laughs> kinda have to give it to Duncan, right? You made That's a great fair, argument, I'm sure. But no one heard it. So yeah, I mean yeah. I tag, tag, not, tag Josh in for this one. Jo give Josh in these ones. I can't. Josh, you know what? Let's, let's, yeah, let's 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 hear Josh's side of it, because this is a very interesting, right? Josh, the question defend was my picks. The question was if the trio of Days, Swag, and AZK stick together, who should their teammates be? Let's hear it, Josh. So I, I have to agree with Jason because Jason's on the track of getting these kind of up and comers or these people that can learn and develop as players and then take that knowledge and apply it to another team that they join. And I really like that aspect of it. Whereas Thorne is going for the, these guys committed this bad thing. Let's 
put them together on this like Alcatraz, make them just be in this prison yeah. amongst themselves, and like this is yeah. their punishment. They, they did this they wrong, so they have to sit here and yeah, they deserve each other exactly. The problem with this lineup, <laughs> despite having the success that the lineup had, was that there were issues within the team with regards to personalities, chemistry, uh, and lackluster performances. Thorne is the first one to say how bad we performed at majors, but we only did one major together. Okay. But like, there were issues within the team that was making me want to leave the team for several months before finally I was removed with Days at the same time. Those issues still exist. And the only reason why Days, Daisy K, and Swag are playing together currently is because they can only play EPL together, right? Other players wouldn't be with just Days or just Swag or just AZK. So having the three of them together gives them opportunities and options for players. And I think that's why Moses' picks would be able to come in and play with his. Boom. Now drop the mic, Josh. Fucking boom. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, you know, I think there's something Duncan would say some shit like... Uh, yeah, if you don't buy into my answer, you support match throwing or something like that. And it's like, okay, well, <laughs> it's, it's the typical saying. Duncan approach to it, right? It's uh, in the back of your mind. Kind of. But I'm going to have to side with uh, Jason's pick on this one. That's just the way it goes. Nifty, JKS, up and coming. That's just the way it is. Uh, here's a good one. Yes or no? Should nothing continue to play professional Counter-Strike? No. No. Jason? Doesn't he have to say yes? He has to go yes. <laughs> He has to say yes. Don't, uh, did you hear us, Jason? I'll take yes. You have to. It works out that way. All right, let's hear your side Must first nice. while you've got good internet, Moses. Um, I'm going to say yes for nothing because I think he's got too much experience, and I think he's shown that he can still be a smart and impact player. He's still got a lot of the skills, and I think he's had to turn to other aspects and develop other aspects of his game recently in order to be impactful. And he had a phenomenal two or three months with Crossley. Okay, Duncan? I'm going to say no because he's someone who's played a long, long time. He's someone where I think his motivation to really be in a potentially top team is probably gone at this point in time. He's someone who liked the environment of the team when they had these recent problems where they didn't have the same kind of practice schedule and application to what you need to be a top pro in the modern day. So I just thought that he's suited to be a top pro nowadays. He can play the game to some degree, but that's not what being a top pro is like in the modern day when you earn a massive salary and you represent a big team and you go to huge tournaments and fans want to cheer for someone who wants to win. So I think now is the time to become a streamer, to step back and keep growing your beard. <laughs> All right, 30 seconds on the clock. You guys can just go at each other as best as you can. Look at the NA region at the moment. There are plenty of those middle-tier teams that he could join, and he would improve them immediately to be able to start contending, to be able to perhaps in the next three, four months be able to fight against the Liquids and Cloud Nines and see where it goes from there. But the guy just still has too much experience, too much of a fan favorite, too much of a brand to give it all up. I think he's too much of a talented individual to be able to do that. The question wasn't, see, you made should he which is implies like an impetus and i'm saying no he shouldn't and giving compelling reasons why continuing to play wouldn't be in his best interests he's a multi-talented man a renaissance man he could do more than just play counter strike unlike you <laughs> both of you wow <laughs> josh what do you think <laughs> the initial argument um i had to go with duncan but at the end there <laughs> no, like he had good. Like when they when they had the thirty seconds, like Jason gave like proper arguments, and then Thor was just like, "Well, the impetus." Of it, 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 it. Okay. Did he give proper arguments? Did he just say teams exist that he could play for? The end, Your Honor. <laughs> your Honor. I feel like you're doing some reductionist revisionist history there. Oh, okay. In that case, you should have just said, "Yeah, he could play for another team. He has a mouse, and he can join the server." There you go. He's he said he said he's got experience. He's um, able to adapt to different roles and okay. And why why does that mean he should play for a team? Question was should because he still can. Because he's he still competitive. He still can. 
So That's Michael what, Jordan could said. probably ride the bench for some NBA team. NBA team doesn't mean he should. That's a good mm. point, but you didn't say that when you had the 30 seconds, did you? Oh, <laughs> philosophy. I've got time now, motherfucker. <laughs> well, I don't know. Can we change our minds now? <laughs> we can always yeah, change I mean... our minds, Josh. We can change from hate to love. We can change from Trump to someone else. I don't know. A lot of things can change. Just because they won't. <laughs> no, just because they won't. We can change from Trump to someone else. Anyone? Ah, whatever. Pets. You guys are crazy. Those are those, those are those fire lines that get him points, aren't they? Uh, they they Not really are. He's challenging if, you to give me if a we're point. Giving, there's a there's a someone else. If we're giving him the Michael Jordan argument, I'd have to give it to Duncan. You think so? That's a, think if if we allow that argument, yeah. I'm kind of leaning that way already. It's weird how that works, but That's yes, hmm. I'm I'm leaning the uh, the Duncan Shields route. I'm gonna give that point to Thorne. It just is what it is. So, who is showmanship? <laughs> showmanship. It's all for the good spirit of the show. Am I right? Uh, let's go with what country could form the best national lineup currently? Denmark. Brazil. This question was a, a question on another episode I was on. I know. It's crazy. How and he answered Denmark from, again. The times change. They morph. Things change. Let's hear it, Moses. I mean, Brazil, they, they basically essentially to a certain degree already have the best national lineup at the moment where they're the number one ranked team. Um, you know, they're, they're a squad that has the best in-game leader, probably the best opera, the best star player, the best, I mean, fur and cold, you could just make them interchangeable. But those three players alone and that, that lineup is playing so well together for two years now, I don't see anyone that can consistently beat them. Duncan? Denmark has probably the most talent in the whole world. They have the most players per position who are really good at their positions. So bearing in mind, we could make any lineup out of this. It doesn't have to be one that exists. We're not limited to teams that already exist. I think you could actually make an even better team. You could take certain players, you could have the stars of teams like North could go and play in Astralis. You could take out a player who you think, like perhaps you want to do pre to be replaced by Valde or something. There's so many different angles you could go, so many different approaches to Counter-Strike and so many positions, that's the key thing, that I think anyone with a modicum of intelligence for the game could make a, a potentially number one team of such talent because that's how much I value intelligence in the game and being able to think about the game that you can creatively think outside the box. You don't just stay inside the box of what has happened. You dare to dream what could happen. That's the thing about you, Steel. You're a fucking dreamer, mate. <laughs> Are you trying to like... <laughs> He's trying to He's pandering. He's pandering. I don't know why I'm addressing him again, though, yeah. So. <laughs> All right. Well, I think we know I what comes times next. thought times change, though. The, the times do go forward. The time goes on. Let's start with... Uh, I believe it's the 30-second part, right? Uh, yeah, there we go. Load up 30 seconds. Let's hear it. Moses, they took the five-man lineup of SK that they have right now, and they couldn't even win the major. That was the most important tournament in the world. They couldn't win it. You're picking Duncan, them to you just, just you just the best team. You just predicted them to beat Astralis earlier in the show. And here's the thing. If you're going to put new, new players yeah, but inside I'm not of the lineup, whoa, 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 you whoa, never whoa, know I'm how that's going to interact. Out. You never yeah. know how the chemistry yeah. is going to work. You no, cannot no, realize I'll the just, interactions I'll between the players. The players. And I'll tell you this right now. No region has produced more players that have come from nothing and become top players in the world the way Brazil has. No region has more hungry players than Brazil to improve. Mm. And, and they've know. come from nothing. Is that some sort of sick innuendo, you pervert? <laughs> okay, relax. <laughs> Josh, I mean, I think this one's pretty clear cut, but what do you think, man? Jason. Easily, right? Like, there's not even a question. Why with that final line about nothing? Yeah. yeah, I mean, as weird as that one might have been subjectively because of what you said. No, that is a hundred percent of Moses thing. Let's uh, let's take a look. We got two more. Let's take a look at uh, which team will show better results: Optic or Phase? New Optic or New Phase? Mm. I said it first. I don't know. Who <laughs> you said it first. did not. Who said it first, Josh? Phase. Honestly, I didn't even hear it. Crazy. <laughs> All right. It looks like uh, Moses said it first. Let's hear what you got for the uh, the good argument there, Thorin. I liked it. Why would I argue first if I was the one second? No, no, that must mean in your mind that you thought I was first, and that's why you're asking no, no, me no. to go. You're the first runner-up. You're not a psychologist. Judge, he's stalling for time. Doc McPoint. He really is. 
Okay. I'm about to hold you in contempt of the show. So, Optic has proven players. They have a major winner in Freiburg. He's hungry. He wants to win again. He wants a new team environment. He's the Indian leader. He gets to decide how the team runs around him. They've got Magus. He was stuck in roles he didn't want to do in North. He's going to be a better player. Now he's going to be really unleashed because he's angry. He's got the hunger in his belly. Now he's left that team. They've got Naf, who apparently still thinks should have been involved in a, tra- a shuffle because he's a good player. He can play a really great supportive style in NA. Who wouldn't want to play with a guy like that? He's going to do a lot in this team. They've got other players who are also good. And with all <laughs> these players combined, the might that they bring together, they can achieve success that's unique to them. Not hackneyed, like someone who just says phase 0.1 seconds faster and thinks that that's an argument. <laughs> okay, Moses, please. <laughs> I mean, the, the easy route to go here is that Duncan also tried to say phase and was just a little bit slow, per usual. Duncan being Maybe a I didn't person. know. Maybe um, I just said that to low you. And he also waited and, and argued and tried to hope and pray that you'd give him phase. So he even knows that they're going to be better. But the easiest thing to say... Is that I don't know just such an upgrade in talent across the board? An established in game leader, Alu, who is on Optic, was dropped okay. for Guardian, who is on Phase, because they know it's an upgrade. There's too much talent in this roster for Optic and Tim. Okay. See, 30 seconds? Uh, yeah, we're going to do the 30 seconds. I think it's okay. appropriate. Let's I've got it. one point to make and one point alone. Moses says that I would have picked Phase for this question who would be better, right? So we're predicting. I am going to take a whole fucking 30 seconds. Would you get to the point? getting predictions wrong? In the E League major playoffs, I went zero to seven. I got every single one wrong. So if I predicted FaZe will do well, they won't do well. And since I didn't answer FaZe, I answered Optic. That means FaZe won't do well. Moses picked FaZe. I, I picked them, so therefore it'll be wrong. Optic wins by default. Maths. Okay, you know what? Hold on. Jason, we're going to give you your own 30 seconds. How about that? Let's, let's rerun that, was that just... back. 30 seconds. That seconds, was just Jason. the worst logic. He's used to getting his own 30 seconds. <laughs> it's a good 30 seconds. Um, yeah, no, this, this, I mean, the, the question is, Optic <laughs> is not going to be able to compete with some of the top teams in the world. I mean, they're, they're, this is a situation where they don't even have an in-game leader who's done it before. They're going to go to Freiburg. He's got to test that out. Baze has all this chemistry together, at least among that core three of Rain and Nico and Kerrigan, knowing how they want to play. Guardian's an upgrade. Olaf is a dynamic player. He can do a lot of different things. This is a team that I think is going to be challenging for one of the top four teams that, that can be a top four team at these big major events moving forward. Optic is going to be scrounging to make it to the EPL playoffs in NA. Okay, Josh, which way are you leaning? I mean, are, are we going by who stole the best argument or who's right? Well, see, see here, here's going. the funny thing, right? Because on one hand... What do you mean? He, didn't, he didn't even make a counter-strike argument. Well, look. We, we know this. We know that Duncan has now made up facts. He's lied. He lied, right? Fake news. So it, it's, uh, it's an alternative thing. Now, Josh, I'm willing to hear what if side you you're picking. If believe it, but is it a lie? If it's not true, then yes, it is a lie. <laughs> All right, so Jason gets the point then, in my mind. I mean, it, it's, it's pretty much a no-brainer. <laughs> but at that point, ah. Uh, what about right. True Lies, an amazing film from 1994? With Arnold Schwarzenegger. Tom Some Arnold. of the best one-liners in history. That, I thought yeah, that we got the best true. one-liners here, honestly, from Duncan. Uh, <laughs> here, but, cool them off. Let's, you know what? I'm just going to do it this way. I'm going to give Moses a point. I'm going to give uh, Duncan a point, and then we're just going to play it out for this last one. It'll be what okay. it is. Let's give Duncan two points on that note. So, Duncan two, Moses one. <laughs> one last question to end the whole thing. Let's just do this. Uh, <laughs> I must who, protest. Sudden must. death. Unfortunately, this is my court of law, and I'm in charge here. Who is the current best play-by-play commentator? I'll just wait. I'll, I'll see what Moses does. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I'll, I'll see how this one plays up. Oh, oh okay. See. I would pick uh, Anders Bloom. Hmm. All right. <laughs> we got a fight. Let's hear it. All right. Let's go with uh, Thorne. If Anders Bloom is indeed not the best play-by-play commentator in the world, why do you, Moses, want to cast with Anders Bloom, plan to cast with Anders Bloom, and will hitch your career to Anders Bloom? I yield the rest of my time. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) Outstanding. Uh, Let's hear it, Jason. 
Um, I, I'm going to say Sedekus just because I think in terms of pure technical skill of commentary and play-by-play, -play, I think Sedekus is just kind of, you know a step up in, in the sense that he can also transition to other games. He can transition to other mediums. Um, and I know he's someone who has a lot of knowledge of how that works. So um, he's not only very exciting to listen to, but the pacing of his voice, it all sounds uh, fun to listen to. Well, 30 seconds on the clock. We'll see what you guys can do. Go for it. So the problem is, it's irrelevant whether he can do other games. We're talking about Counter-Strike. Secondly, a primary quality for a play-by-play -play caster to really be on top of the game isn't just to sound great. It's actually to watch the game. And Salakis doesn't watch the game. When another person's talking, he watches stuff on his screen, including races. He looks at scores from hockey. So he's not doing his job as well as he could. Whereas Anders B. Loom, he is locked in. He's loaded. He's just all about Counter-Strike. Yes, and he's a very, very close second, just a very, very small step below. But Sadikus, I think that's the big thing, because it isn't just Counter-Strike commentator, it's play-by-play -play commentator. And the skills that Sadikus has can translate to other things. And that's an important thing to have when you're so talented at one thing that you can translate it to another arena. Hmm. This Shame is... you're not talented at doing game shows as well as being a third-rate analyst desk. Order. What's with the personal shots? Jesus. It's just slow down. It's what he knows he's just lost. It's, it's like, he first of all, over here like, going to give him, like... The, the only reason... <laughs> like, no, like, no, pause. No, Let's no. take this opportunity to enjoy this. He is freeze-framed just like that. What did you want to say, Duncan? Let's just hear it. Uh, Moses no is a good guy. You know, he tries his best. He, you know, he comes to this show. He's just a little stocky guy from, again, the outer suburbs of Michigan. So I don't really know. I don't care. No one knows. All that he has is legs. He just dreams of sitting by a lake being a top caster one day. And I, I personally think he should win this show. He's really tried his hardest. You know, he's been on the show before. He was given a rigged victory last time. So let's just see if we can give him a real win. I don't know, Josh, are you feeling it? What do you think? Well, the thing is like, okay, if what was the wins, question? you just done what I said. Wait, 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 what was the question? Wait, 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 wait. was the question counter-strike commentator or play-by-play -play commentator? Who is the current best play-by-play -play commentator is how it is phrased. So it could what have been play a play by play commentator from any game, even. But they chose Sadakis and Anders. Yeah. Okay. So I don't know why Duncan's taking personal shots after being gifted a point to be make it to the sudden death round. First and foremost, okay. I'm in the playoffs, mate. <laughs> Relax. I, <laughs> don't get anniversary, dude. It was an anniversary. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay, come on. Okay. Go so <laughs> relax. <laughs> Oh, he's, he's rattled. Okay. I, I think because the question was play by play commentator and not counter strike commentator, I think Sadakis is the pick. It's just like that. Just, just like, like that. that. And I feel that you're exactly right. And I love when Thorne loses on the show personally because Me too. he wants Even to call these victories rigged. Points. And they and kind of we, are. As we all know, Thorne usually wins. This is a big failure for him. Big failure. With, uh, big Owen failure. Really? Joke's on you. I threw it. <laughs> <laughs> Happy anniversary, darling. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Congrats, Jason. Jason, let's hear some parting words from you, and we'll close this thing out. Uh, dear Optic fans, um, <laughs> we can be friends still, J just, because <laughs> just because I don't think that Optic is – the best team really in the world like. doesn't mean like the organization or the fans. You don't have to get all up in arms every time I predict an optic lineup not do very well. Um, there's a lot of questions about this team, and if you don't agree with that sentiment, then you all, in a sense. So we can all come together. I'm excited to watch this. There's a lot of players in this squad that I like, both personally and players. I would like to see them do well. And let's just all throw on the optic green wall team. Hmm. And there we have it again. A few broken words from Moses. Uh, broken man. He, he sounds a little broken on his <laughs> side of the internet there. It's working now as well, so it's great. I mean, you've already got the W, right? So really, who cares at that point? Uh, Duncan, Josh, you guys got anything for anybody? Dear Optic fans, this is just a show. <laughs> when people say things on this show, they don't always mean them. Moses hates your team. In fact, no, he likes some of the team. He just hates you. And that's why, even when he knew deep down, like we all did, 
course Optic was going to win E-League Season 2. They're the best team that's ever played eSports. But he just hates you so much. He predicted against them, and he will continue to predict against them. Fuck you. Fuck the green wall. Wow. <laughs> All right, Josh. Let's hear it. Uh, thanks for having me on. <laughs> there you go. It's as easy as that. All right, guys. Thanks for... Uh, Thanks for participating in episode 11, uh, and I will see you guys next episode.